beyond boundaries. What a theme, huh? Beyond, now when I think of boundaries, I think of rules, regulations, and restrictions. And I think of the parents, and the teachers, and the supervisors, who hold us accountable with regard to those boundaries. Now that's not a bad thing. I know if you're like me, I need supervisors. I need someone holding me accountable to do the right thing. But beyond boundaries is something different. I think of those leaders, those teachers, those supervisors, those parents who inspire us to go beyond the call of duty, to, to do more than we have to, to do it not because they tell us, but because we want to. I would like to share with you what the research says about how to make that happen. And not just for other people, but for yourself. Here's the deal. How can we inspire people and ourselves to be self-motivated? There's another word. It's called empowerment. You've heard that word, right? Now, the management definition of empowerment is get her done. Just get her done with fewer resources and less time. I empower you. Make it happen. I'm talking about feeling empowered. That's different. Feeling empowered is when you're self-motivated. Now, if you want to know if you feel empowered or if your child, your student, your worker feels empowered, ask them three questions. And if they yes, say yes to these three questions, they will feel empowered. And by the way, this is not based on common sense, it's based on research. But you've all been there, so it'll feel like common sense. Question number one, can you do it? Albert Bandura calls it self-efficacy. Do you believe you can do it? Do you have the time, the knowledge, and the training to do what we're asking you to do? If you answer yes, good. Second question, will it work? Do you believe that we're asking you to do the process that will work? Albert Bandura calls that response efficacy, believing that the behavior will lead to the ultimate outcome. By the way, that takes education, right? We have to show them the data. We might show them some theory. We might we show them, teach them why this might work. I just used the word education. Earlier, I used the word training. Is there a difference? In elementary school, it, we call it education. Middle school, education. High school, education. College, higher education. Then you go to industry, what do you call it? Training. You have your training department. There must be a difference. Well, you know the difference. Do you want your kids to have sex education or sex training? <laughs> and your kids might answer the question differently. Because you know that training means you do the behavior and you get feedback. That's powerful, powerful. Have you ever heard this word? online training it's an oxymoron isn't it i mean training is watch the behavior get online training it's like plastic silverware jumbo shrimp legal brief country music <laughs> i mean it doesn't work okay so if you answer yes do it will work third question is it worth it so we've had a training question, we've had an educational question, this is the motivational question. Do you believe the consequences? This is about consequences. B.F. Skinner taught us this, selection by consequences. Dale Carnegie quoted B.F. Skinner and said, from the day you were born, everything you did was because you wanted something for doing it. Consequences. Is it worth it? So you have to convince people that it's worth it. Now, by the way, if you answer yes to those three questions, you feel competent. Am I right? You feel competent at doing worthwhile work. You've all been there. When you feel competent at doing worthwhile work, you're more likely to be self-motivated. You've been there. No one has to be looking over you. You feel Now, here's the challenge, leaders, teachers. How do you inspire people to feel competent? Well, you give them feedback. You give them recognition. You show them they are competent. 